Hi. In the previous video we have seen the schemas and the domain that are correlated with anxiety. The name of the domain was overvigilance. Now let's have a closer look to them. Anxiety is an emotion that occurs at a hidden or open threat. Experiencing at a very high and or chronic nature, makes it hard to live with. But actually anxiety is an emotion which helps us to survive and maintain. It gives us a signal about various threatening and or catastrophic events. Many of the cognitions about catastrophic events can be found in vulnerability to harm schema. These catastrophic events can be in many areas. The first one is vulnerability to medical problems. This is the most common type of this schema. People are afraid of losing their health, being sick, especially some sickness without sufficient treatments. Like AIDS, hepatitis, cancer, multiple sclerosis or any other destructive diseases. Fear of losing our minds is an interesting type of this schema. It is easily overlooked dealing with the origins of the anxiety. For example, most of the time the fear of flight are not about the crush or the turbulence. It is mostly related with the fear of the fear which can be triggered in the air. Our clients talk about this fear as they will have a panic attack in the plane and have nowhere to go and calm themselves. They think they will experience this fear till the end of flight and even it lands safely, their mind won't be the same. For the people who doesn't watch horror movies, the real horror movie starts after the movie ends. We all know nothing will happen during the movie. But we are afraid of losing our balance after the movie for a long time. For someone it is two hours, and maybe for someone else it is two weeks or two months. Is there someone behind the curtain? Will something catch my hand while turning the light on? We don't like the residual feeling itself. We all know the ghost, the beast or the psycho will not be there. But the residual feeling will hurt us for a while depending on the level of our vulnerability to harm schema. In a GNC, we know there is no big enough sharks to harm us, but we don't like the feeling that suddenly catches us while swimming. The movie, Jaws, hurt so many people already. This is about losing our mind's control. We are not happy with our mind sending so many threatening thoughts while swimming or having a shower. Many people call this state a kind of madness. We nearly lose control of our thoughts. It feels also similar with the disgust. Disgust is a natural warning signal of our body to protect us from harmful foods, places. Many cleaner OCD patients tell that if they don't wash their hands after touching dirty things, the feeling of disgust will be so overwhelming that they can lose their minds. Similar to watching a horror movie for that kind of phobic people. The feelings of disgust and fear are aids for survival. But for some of us, some biochemical imbalance in our brains make these mechanisms work at a dysfunctional levels. And we reach the level of disorder, and then cannot maintain our daily lives. We develop additional dysfunctional coping mechanisms, to cope with the fear and disgust. But then, we are already in the area of compulsions, which feed the disorder in turn. Similarly some of us are phobic for the money-wise issues. The economical situation of us are about to face an unexpected sudden catastrophe. It is a matter of time that we lose all of our money and then be poor. There is no guarantee that our economical situation will last forever. Feeling this way we try to save money, spend less, stay away from luxury expenses like a normal vacation. We try to save every penny for the approaching economical disaster and we lose the joy of life, entertainment and peace that normal people live even they don't have that much money. Having problems with the laws and legal institutions like government is another area of anxiety. Easy to understand its basic function, to stay away from crime and be honest. If you be careful enough with the laws, you will live in the community and be safe forever. But if you somehow commit a crime or be a part of it, your safe and predictable life will be gone forever, even you are not busted. So it is healthy to have this mechanism in between healthy limits. If your mental system is allergic to this issue, even very little possibilities can cause big emotional reactions and you can go so far to take precautions, 
like a client who was carrying his own bottle of coke with him outside and and takes the bottle to his house after drinking it. He explained the reason of his behavior as, if some crime happens in my office after he left, police can get his fingerprints, and falsely accuse him as the perpetrator. Another type of vulnerability schema is characterized by the phobic response to natural events or situations like earthquake, fire, elevators, height, subways, insects, etc. There are many different triggers of this kind of fears. The second highest schema, for its correlation with anxiety, is negativity and pessimism, which the people expect the worst outcome of the events. This schema helps the survival function also, being prepared for the worst result. But again at the pathological levels it ruins the function of the person. Most of the time magical thinking accompanies this schema. People with pessimism schema has a tendency to believe that good thoughts or things in their lives can cause bad results. Interestingly, this schema is the third one with the high anxiety levels. It is characterized with the high perception of the signals of the abandonment in the close relationships. This schema is considered to be a disconnection domain. But according to our research, which is in preview, it appeared in the overvigilance domain. This schema, like abandonment, also has high correlation with anxiety levels and takes its place in the overvigilance domain. It is a thought pattern about others which will betray, abuse, misuse, neglect, deny the person at the end for sure. Everybody has bad intentions, most of them are hiding them. Interestingly, these people can maintain relationships with deceiving people, because they are the ones who they can understand the bad intentions easily, others are more risky because they are hiding themselves. We can think of this scheme of vulnerability to harm from others. This schema can also be considered as an altruistic mechanism that help the adaptation and survival. If one can help another member of the society, they can together cope with difficult situations better. One feels good with rewarding sensations having someone else's gratefulness. And in the opposite direction, one feels conscience which gives kind of anxiety to get activated to fix the situation. Like every schema, it is an unbalanced form of an evolutionary adaptation mechanism. As the vulnerability to harm schema, here, the coping power of the others are overlooked, and the individual feels that the only solution for the others is him or her. Other person's needs are to be met at once. To protect the others is an evolutionary adaptive way, but here the balance is broken. People forget their own needs. Beside the unfulfillment of the person's own needs, the corrosive feeling of over-responsibility is the source of anxiety. These people cannot feel the limits of themselves. They cannot be satisfied with the things they did for the others. Like the disgust feeling of a person with cleaning OCD, the did I do enough doubt lasts for a long time. Maybe here, like the clean enough button of the cleaning type of OCD, fair enough button is broken. Doubt lasts forever, and uncertainty produces anxiety. If we call self-sacrifice also as over-responsibility, we can say the punitiveness is an aggravated form of it. Here the fairness is so important and any mistake or unfair situation produce a great reaction. These people with this schema is like having an allergic reaction to unfairness. The prominent emotion is anger, but anger, as always, is a secondary emotion. People tell the feeling of helplessness at first while they face an unfair event, and then anger comes for coping with it. self sacrifices are not necessarily punitive, but they gang up against unfair attitudes or actions. Here, in punitiveness, an evolutionary adaptive mechanism is working in an unbalanced way, producing so much anxiety and anger in return. So, we have finished the explanations of these six schemas of overvigilance domain. The first four schemas look like an overperception of unfair events occurrence. A sudden untreatable sickness, being abused by others, being abandoned, facing the worst scenarios. When we look at the last two schemas, self-sacrifice and punitiveness, it looks like these people are hypersensitive to the unfair behaviors of themselves or others. 
The concepts that we are talking about this overvigilance domain also sound similar to the superego concept of Sigmund Freud. According to him, the superego acts as the conscience, maintaining our sense of morality and prescription from taboos. The superego and the ego are the product of two key factors, the state of helplessness of the child and the Oedipus complex. This slide summarizes what we discussed in this video. The origins of anxiety has two layers. One layer is helplessness. Four schemas are closely related with this layer. The other layer is conscientiousness. And this one is related with two schemas. Dealing with anxiety problems, the first layer, helplessness, is more easy to see and deal with. But the second layer, conscientiousness, can easily be overlooked. Within this video we discussed the schemas of overvigilance domain. The next video will be about noticing the second layer, person's exaggerated view about fairness. Thank you.